we're now ready to assemble the parts so new make sure it's metric standard millimeter IAM inventor assembly place the first component you place needs to be grounded select the object right click and ground it. That means it can't be moved in any position and everything else will be grounded to it or locked to it with our constraints. Right click, set current view as home, fit to view, so whenever we move things around click our little grey house, it'll go back to that position. Place the rest of our components. Go to place, left click place it will go to our project that we've set up and we want handle cap one two don't need to click anything else go straight to place uh, spindle place spindle cap place and our handle. You can press the escape key to end the placement of the objects. Now we need to constrain all of these together. Cylindrical components I find the best constraint is insert. So we go to constrain, have a choice of mate, angle, tangent and insert. Insert's very good for cylinders. I want to mate that cylinder to either of those. The diameter doesn't have to be the same, it just has to be on the same plane. And it will snap into place. We can apply an offset if we so desire and apply it. We'll add our spindle cap next. Again it's cylindrical so insert will probably be the easiest. I want that surface to butt up against to insert to this level of that surface or that one. Apply. Now this one here is locked in place. That's not really what I want to do. We can go to the spindle, open it up, and we'll have all our constraints that we have applied. I wish to edit this one. And instead of making it 50 millimeters, I'd like it to be, if we turn around, face on and have a look, I would like its closed position to be touching the frame. Now, um, we do a basic math, we know it's 9mm, if we try 8, it'll be buried in the metal a little, if we try 10, it'll leave a gap, so we worked it out that 9 will be the correct size for that. But we don't want to lock in that position. We want to be able to move it, but the minimum will be 9. So we need to turn both of those on. OK. Now we can try that constraint. We should have to leave it all the way out, all the way in. We immediately have a problem. It goes out too far. So back to our insert, edit. Change it from 75 to 70. Okay, and our limit now is logical. Happy with that. Constrain the handle. Now there's no circle on here to mate or flush to because that circle is on a curved surface, it's not a true circle. So we'll need to use something else. We'll go back to mate, but we'll mate the center to the center. Apply and that will allow us to move the handle in and out and we can apply our caps. Free rotate. We need to be able to see 
the bottom surface. Constrain. Insert because it's a curved surface. I want the inside of the bottom of the drill to line up to that surface. Apply. I want the inside of this one to attach to that. Apply. And we have a problem. The handle can move through. We need to limit that movement. In this case, I would suggest we use tangent. We have a flat surface, and I want it to limit when I hit this curved surface. So that'll be our tangential limit. Again, locks it into place. We need to use uh, more constraints here. Now, the minimum constraint will be zero. The maximum, with a simple bit of mathematics, from this surface to this surface, works out to be 64 millimeters. Apply. And we should be able to slide this back and forth until it hits those limits and won't go any further. Now, technically, we've finished. However, when we do our orthographic view, we need to do a sectional view. The section view needs to go right through the center of this, and we can't just guess it by lining it up and going, yeah, that's good enough. It actually has to be exactly straight up and down, or the section line won't go through the middle of it. Here's how we achieve that. Back to constraint. We'll choose mate, flush, and I want the flat surface of that flush with that. And it can't work. It can't go down far enough for that to work. So we will use offset as resting position. As soon as you use that, it can calculate the offset and it'll work. Problem solved. Now we don't want the handle pulled all the way down, so we'll give it an offset of 30. Too high. Let's try 20. 20 looks good. Apply. All our constraints are now limited. We can't go outside of where we need to go. And if we do need to move this, we can go back to our clamp jaw and flush can be suppressed. So everything will work. And if we need it back on, turn the suppression off and unsuppressed and it'll lock into place. Save it.